Good morning, everyone. It's nine o'clock, uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, before I get started, there's, there's two items. I, I just noted the, the speaker request forms. Um, if you would like to speak on an item, please complete the speaker request form located on the table in the back of the chambers and return it to the planning staff located in the lower right uh, side of the dais. That's Cody here. Um, and then as a, as a general reminder, um, all new construction use permits or conditional use permits, excuse me, conditional use permit reviews, minor planned unit developments, construction permits, and mining perm permits are not heard by the Board of Commissioners unless an appeal is filed filed with the planning department. So just uh, two notes there um, before we go ahead and get started. Uh, with that, uh, we'll go ahead and get started with uh, the, the meeting this morning, January 27th, 2020. Um, recommendations of the Planning Commission on certain items from this agenda will be considered by the Board of Commissioners at their regular meeting on February 4th, 2020 at 1030. Planning Commission utilizes speaker request forms which are available in the Commission Chambers during the meeting. First item on the agenda is the roll call. Um, note that everyone is here, less Sunny, and Mark is here from the board. Well, first item, approval of the January 13th, um, 2020 minutes. Does anybody have any uh, corrections uh, to the minutes? Seeing none, I would entertain a, I'd entertain a motion for approval. So move. Motion. Second. Second. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number two is the approval of the agenda. Um, today, we on the consent agenda, we have items uh, three through 10. Um, we have uh, regular items uh, 11 and then and 12 and then construction permit agenda items uh, 13 and 14 through 18 are housekeeping items. Um, does anybody have any amendments to the agenda this morning? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion for approval of the agenda this morning. Move approval. Second. Motion second. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Brings us to the consent agenda, Brittany. Good morning, Brittany Molitor, the consent agenda. The following items have been placed on the consent agenda for action to be taken on all items in accordance with staff's recommendation by a single vote. Any item may be removed from the consent agenda by any planning commissioner, staff member, or audience member for separate consideration. The findings of this planning commission are recommendations to the Pennington County Board of Commissioners who will make the final decision. Item number three is conditional use permit review CU 1401 for PLM Investments LLC, Mary L. Riss, to review a single wide mobile home as a single family residence. Staff is recommending approval of the extension of conditional use permit 1401 with conditions. Item number four is conditional use permit review CU 1727 for Beverly Sears to review an existing 12 by 12 structure to be used as a single family residence in a suburban residential district. Staff is recommending approval of the extension of conditional use permit CU 1727 with conditions. Item number five is conditional use permit review CU 1845 for the Caputa Community Cemetery to review a community cemetery in a general agriculture district. Staff is recommending to continue this review with one condition. Item number six is conditional use permit review CU 1846 for Brady and Liana Wolf to review a guest house in a low density residential district. Staff is recommending approval of the extension of the conditional use permit 1846 with conditions. Item number seven is conditional use permit review CU 1847 for Kevin and Crystal McKinstry to review an accessory structure, a shed prior to a principal structure in a suburban residential district. Staff is recommending approval of the extension of conditional use permit CU 1847 with conditions. Item number eight is minor plat MPL 1945 for Duane and Margaret Galkey to combine lots to create lot 18R of Gold Mountain subdivision. Staff is recommending approval of minor plan MPL 1945 with conditions. Item number nine is conditional use permit CU 1935 for Shirley Brownell and Robert Brownell 
to allow three seasonal rental cabins and to allow the existing single family residents to be used as a caretaker manager's residence in the limited agriculture district. Staff is recommending to deny without prejudice conditional use permit CU 1935 with the applicant's concurrence. And finally, number 10, rezone RZ 1918 for Gordon and Jennifer Sabo to rezone 40 acres from General Agriculture District to Limited Agriculture District. And staff is recommending to deny without prejudice of rezone RZ 1918 with the applicant's concurrence. Thank you. Are there any items that staff wishes to pull from the agenda? No. Are there any items that the membership wishes to pull from the agenda? Sure. Go I'd ahead, like Kathy. To, um, for number four. Okay. Are there any others? Uh, for those folks in the audience, uh, items three through ten are on the consent agenda. Um, we will vote on all of those items at at one time. Are are any of those items items that uh, folks in the audience wish to discuss this morning? Otherwise, it'll get voted on with one vote. Seeing none um, from the audience, um, that leaves items three. And five through ten on the consent agenda. Uh, consent agenda. I would entertain a motion for approval. I move for approval. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion on those items. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number four. Morning, commissioners. Jason Tennyson, County Planner. Agenda item number four is conditional use permit review 1727 for Beverly Sears. She's not in the audience right now, so I'll do my best to answer any questions you have. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Yeah, my, my question really is this, and that is that I'm a little mixed up because this is a conditional use permit review to make to be allow this structure to be used as a single family residence. Correct. But now when I go back here to the current analyses that the staff recently visited in December, it, it strikes me as that the structure is no longer being used or even considered to being used as a, as a uh, single family residence. It's just being used as a playhouse uh, with a limited seasonal use and so on. So I, I'm a little mixed up. Is it this, the current use of it isn't they're not asking anymore for it to be a single family residence, right? So um, I, we had a lot of discussion on this one. There was some back and forth. Historically, there has gone back and forth. Is it a shed or is it a single family residence? And ultimately, we felt the use uh, that they have up there being considered is a single family residence. Uh, any occupants of that structure are going to be kind of secondary residents to uh, the primary structure up there. You can see on the screen. This is their single family residence up there now. Right. Uh, they ended up building this shed uh, a few years ago, and uh, with the intent of it being a playhouse for the grandchildren, uh, they came up there occasionally and slept in it. Uh, staff received multiple complaints about that people sleeping in there. So uh, we found out the best way ahead would be to convert that to a single family residence and get it permitted that way. There was a condition on there the last time this was reviewed that they had to you know, install an incinerator toilet. Yes. Uh, yeah. We didn't feel that that was uh, even practical given the, the interior. It's a 12 by 12 shed essentially, and uh, right. there's really no place to put that in here. Right. And uh, so being that the resident or anyone staying in this structure would be secondary residents of the single family residents, they're going to use all the uh, the on-site wastewater treatment of the primary residence versus right. this one. So I remove that condition. So in other words, it, it's possible to have a single family residence without any plumbing or any, uh, any wastewater the, system or anything. Right, I think given the situation and, and the use of this structure, that, that we thought it was appropriate at that point. Yeah. I'm sorry, what did you just say? I said given the use of the structure and the location of it <coughs> in regards to the single family residence on the adjacent property uh, we felt that it was appropriate to recommend approval of it you know and i i'm not really going to argue with that exactly but you know when i was looking at this i'm thinking to me it's like having a tent in your backyard <laughs> that you put it up occasionally and have kids sleep in it and except this one that you don't take down but it's the same concept and you wouldn't make a tent a single family residence and, and, the, and the use of this is about the same. 
And I, so it, it just can be very confusing when you have a single family residence that is really meant for, you know, occasionally kids sleep in it. Correct. It's, this it's, was more or less to address neighboring concerns and the complaints that we receive. I see. Yeah. What type of concerns do the right. neighbors have? That people were sleeping in it and it was being utilized as a... As and it a bothered stop. them that people were sleeping in there? Correct. Huh. Mr. Oh. Chairman, go ahead. Was anybody paying to sleep in there or is this just family, like family, grandkids or Not whatever? To my knowledge, no. I spoke with the applicant's son who, who was acting as her agent last month and uh, he said it was just being utilized by family. Huh. I don't know. I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to vote against the continuing, but I will say it seems very odd to me. Right. Yeah, and I I don't know if classifying as a single residence, single family residence works either. I just it's just kind of baffling. It might set a precedent actually. Um, single, you know, classifying something as a single family residence that's twelve by twelve and has no toilet or or sink or kitchen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just. We did add, uh, address that through a condition as well, that if there, the CUP was ever transferred, that they would have to contact uh, the planning, zone, planning and zoning office so that we can review the on-site wastewater treatment system so that the, that way this property cannot be sold as a single-family residence to anyone. No, I get that. I'm just thinking if we isolate a structure on a piece of property and call it a single-family um, dwelling, if you will, but it has no kitchen, it has no plumbing or whatsoever, not applying it to this property, but someone else down the road might go, well, if they can get it, maybe I can get that as well. I mean, I just, are we going to set a precedence that somebody is going to do that? It's just a question. That would be my concern. Right. I think in this instance, though, um, the, that there's there's an ancillary structure that'll, that has all of those amenities in it. So this is not. Uh, this would not be typical if someone wanted to put a 12 by 12 shed and and make it a home, um, necessarily. Uh, and there were no other things around. Then I, I think that that would trigger those um, those requirements. Right, but I, I guess what I'm getting at is it's it's a kind of like Kathy was saying. It's like a tent, or you know, just the kids are sleeping in it. Do, do they really need to have a conditional use permit for kids to sleep in it? That's what I'm struggling with, calling it a residence and that they have to have a permanent. Sure. Does that make sense? Yes. I think that the thing that's unique about this one is that it's on a separate piece of property from the single family residence that's across the street. There are no other structures on that property. Sorry, I just have one um, kind of general comment about what's on our zoning ordinance. Under Section 204I, under our general district provisions, it lays out what's required for mobile homes and what's required for single-family residences. And it says in the last, um, like, number seven of that, that manufactured homes, modular homes, and site or sick-built homes not meeting the above standards shall obtain a conditional use permit. So that's basically why um, this structure was required to get a conditional use permit for that. Um, when we looked at this as a whole, it was the only thing that made sense that somewhat met the requirements of our ordinance. Mm -hmm. Can I see that overhead picture again? This one? Uh, of the whole property. There you go. So rapid map is off here. I'll have to put that caveat out there. Uh, this should be shifted over. The uh, property to the, I guess, north, is that another home or is that a garage? This one? No, nope, the left. There you go. Uh, this is another single family residence up there, not owned by the property. It is. And then up where they have the, what we're considering making a single family residence, it's in the circle, right? Yes, sir. Um, how close is any other property around there? Any uh, other? There's this dwelling? adjacent property here. This property line uh -huh. right here should be uh, right about here. Okay, so they, where, they, they do meet the setbacks, the eight foot setback for us, suburban residential district. And where is the closest home? That uh, one? The closest home that's not owned by the applicant is this one here. Right there? Hmm. I just, I guess I'm kind of with you in a little bit. Why, are, why is anybody even complaining? I don't, why do we even have to address it? Is my question. 
you know, <clears throat> it's their property. If somebody, like Kathy said, if you pitched a tent on that property and somebody complained, you could basically say, well, I'm sorry, that's too bad. I mean, why, are, why do we need to address this? Uh, I think they were just, uh, the neighbors were concerned that it wasn't be, being utilized as, a, as an appropriate use in a residential district, a suburban residential district. Uh, I can't explain what the, the uh, complaints were from the neighbors. It was a little bit before my time, and I didn't. Uh, hmm. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jim, since oh. I've already talked. On I was it. just <laughs> going to make the comment that what if we called it a tool shed and the kids just went over there and slept sometimes? Would the neighbors complain about that? Would that be a yes. problem? Would yep. we need this was permitted at one time as a secondary structure on that property. Right. Okay. And then the neighbors saw they complained, spending the but night. Do they the have any, ju any justification to complain? I mean, the kid, what if the kids slept out in the yard or the kids did pitch a tent? Those are all casual and, you know, sort of unstructured uh, arrangements. But <laughs> I keep wanting to <coughs> think, uh, I feel a little bit like Mark. I wonder. Should we be spending too much time on this? I mean, it's kind of an interesting problem, but I don't know if we ought to. Okay, anyway, go ahead. Sure. Um, Brittany Molitor again. Um, kind of some history with this. Um, the contractor originally came in for this and said it was a shed and that they didn't need a building permit. And then um, our office started getting complaints that there was people and kids and things on the porch. Um, and around the structure. Um, so then they came in and got a conditional use permit for an accessory structure in a residential district. And then our office kept getting complaints because they did have a grill on the little deck area and people would um, hang out there or stay there, their family. Um, and I believe Mrs. Sears and her sons were trying to not or try to help the situation so our office wasn't continually getting complaints and so they could feel like they could if they wanted to grill on their deck or have their oh. children stay there that their those issues would be moot essentially this was kind of a way for them to kind of put all of that um, to rest so to speak and will it put it to rest <laughs> um, since we have had it as a single family residence we have not received any complaints really that is just amazing. <laughs> okay. Uh, it solves the problem. Well, like you said, I don't oh. think we should waste any more time on this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll move approval on on um, item four, the conditional use permit review, CU 17-27. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Anyone from the audience wish to speak on this issue? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Brings us to item 11. Uh, Cody Sack, environmental planner. Item 11 is mining permit 20-01. It's to allow an, the extraction of sand, gravel, and other rock material to be crushed and hauled off site and to include stockpiling of topsoil on the site. The applicant is h and Land Company number two, LLC, Pat Hall and Brian Hemmerbeck. Um, the total acreage of this is 3,083. Um, it encompasses eight lots. All zone general agriculture district. Uh, this was routed around through the inner department review. Um, some notes, uh, county highway department, there's some there's several properties involved here. The main mine you'll see up top is where they're looking at mining currently. And then the southern parcels down here in this purplish color um, are future sites. Um, they just wanted it all encompassed under one permit. Um, County Highway was referring to this lower section. If they do start mining this lower section, they will be going through section lines and they'll have to improve section lines and stuff. So the highway talked about getting a permit through the Board of Commissioners to do that. Uh, the County Professional Environmental Planner said there is floodplain hazard on several of the lots involved. However, the um, work will be done outside of that flood zone. Um, South Dakota Department of Transportation had some um, concerns such as trucking, um, turning movements, um, turning onto Highway 44 
and mitigation thresholds how many how many trucks are going across there if it's increasing the volume by 10 percent um the applicant who's not here today is working with dot to address their concerns uh, the total square footage of the disturbed areas will, is roughly over 1,200 acres. Um, most of it is up in, most of it could be down in this southern mine section. The current mine area location of the main mine is 100 acres. Um, they will be pulling double trailers. Um, their main access will be off of Wise Heart, which is already an improved opened up section line. Um, if they do go to the lower section, they'll have to um, use Antelope Creek Drive, which would be, which is mostly improved, but there is a section that is unimproved to get to the property. And staff hasn't received any concerns regarding mining permit 20-01, and they have applied for a construction permit, which is also on the later construction permit agenda for this. And staff did recommend approval with 11 conditions. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff on this item? Go ahead, Kevin. So is that is that Rapid Creek that is the floodplain area? Correct, yes. So um, is, and I guess my question, so has there been review by you and your staff, or you and the staff about whether, I mean, here's what really where I'm thinking about is it. So, I mean, one of the one of the um, provisions of the current mining ordinance five zero seven, I think, mm -hmm. is that we have to make sure that uh, runoff is controlled. Mm -hmm. And so, <coughs> when I hear floodplain, even though of course we're not going to be disturbing the floodplain. Um, it's it's all Rapid Creek area, and so any runoff could ultimately end up in Rapid Creek, you know, crossing the floodplain. Mm -hmm. So is there, has there been a, a good review of their operational plan in terms of the, the controls that they'll have to ensure that there isn't that kind of runoff into Rapid Creek? Yes, from my understanding from their operational plan is they're going to have on the south side berms that run the entire length of that disturbed area that'll keep all of that from getting into Rapid Creek, it'll keep it on, basically create a barrier between. So the way they're going to control it is with berms. Correct. Right. Okay. All right. They they submitted like a twenty some page operational plan. They actually applied the the information they gave us is under the three twenty, which is mining oh, ordinance, yeah. which is no longer valid. That's just what they gave gave us, right. um, which they actually gave us more than what is required under five hundred seven B. Uh huh. Okay. So, all right, thank you. Yeah. And then all the erosion control stuff is addressed in 507 in, the, in their construction. <coughs> okay. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Travis. Um, item I, so the applicant's working with uh, South Department uh, DOT, with the, uh, South Dakota DOT, about the comments the staff sent during the routing process. Do we see those comments? Did I miss those? Or um, those The comments that were received would be under... Um, Number four, request for comment G. Those would be South Dakota's Department of Transportation comments. Gotcha. Okay. I just was make sure I, that was all the comments there. Mm -hmm. I, I have some questions. Um, you said that this is under 507, but we, uh, I thought that we voted on 320. When does 320 become active? Um, sometime in early February, February 12th. Okay. And then my second question is in regards to this, uh, Wise Heart Road, graveled 18 to 20 feet wide road. We currently have some issues, uh, out north of town here. Um, do, is Wise Heart Road a county road? If not, is it a private road? Are they the homeowners of that private road? Um, are there adjacent landowners that, that are aware of what's going to happen here, et cetera, et cetera? Um, from my understanding, it's a, it's a section line road. Um, County Highway didn't make any comments on any concerns of them using Wise Heart Road. Um, so, and there's no road district out there. So 
it would either be highway or road district. And since there's no road district, I believe it's county highway because I believe I had a conversation with Mark about the approach permit off of Weishart Road. And so I, I guess to further that then, so, so really there's no one that owns the, owns the road. I think not it would that be I, not that I'm aware of. Highway didn't make any comments if they maintained it or not, and I guess I wouldn't know if, without speaking to like Mark or Bill, if Highway maintains that. Um, that's something we can look into. Um, I think it would be appropriate then if they're going to be the main users of that road, and there's no additional landowners that they're required to maintain that that road. That seems. Um, just so we don't get into similar situations. Okay. I don't know what the board's thought of, of that is. Well, I know that Antelope Creek Road, that's uh, to the northern portion of it, there was um, some uh, housing that we approved a while back, some rezoning and stuff at, <coughs> on that northern side of it. So I know there's some housing in that area that could be impacted by that if they're traveling up that Antelope Creek Road. But yeah, good thoughts on that one. Would they, would they not have been notified? I, I believe that they would They would have been. That was the question, if, if someone else uses that same road or not. If, if the neighboring was notified, uh, no, under 507B, neighbors are not required to be notified for the mining permit. They wouldn't be notified for this request? Mm -mm, no. Interesting. Uh, question. Go ahead, Jim. Roughly how far is it from the airport, this location? I'm not... um, six miles. Six miles, Mark says. Is that about? No, I think it's probably two or three. Oh. Probably. Oh, has, the, has the crow flies? Or? I, I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't measure it. This kind of shows, the picture up here kind of shows in relation where the properties are to the Rapid City Airport. I would say at least a mile and a half. I was hoping it might be six miles away. I, I like the idea of these sand and gravel operations being out away from housing. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I was struck by last, uh, last meeting when the Universal Transport area the folks who came in complaining about the removal of that sh uh, material by Shad. And I noticed that Pete Lane was now moving south uh, along Sturgis Road there with, you know, land that they've owned them, I know, for a long time. But anyway, uh, I just find it sort of unfortunate that we are kind of pinned in by very close gravel operations in the dust that's that's generated is rather unpleasant. This would be the prevailing winds would blow it east and there isn't any housing out there, it doesn't seem like. But anyway, I think that's something to be thought about even though we have no control over Pete Lean or anything like that. And and most of the housing that would be affected would be if when when and if they ever got to that lower section and they were utilizing Antelope Creek. Um, but they are if they do do that lower section and start mining it there to come they're supposed to come in and talk to the planning department right. about it beforehand okay well. further questions does anyone in the audience wish to speak on this issue seeing none um recommendation from uh staff recommends approval of mining permit 20-01 with uh 11 conditions um i i would uh i, I would like to see a, a condition uh that that the mine operator be responsible to uh, maintain weisshart road from their property out to the highway Are you looking for a motion? Uh, I was just going to ask for that, Sandy, yes. <laughs> Would entertain a motion. I'll move approval with the um, additional condition that you stated where they're, where they're responsible for the maintenance of the graveled road um, north up to Highway 44. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Brings us to item 12. is Jason Fennison, County Planner. <clears throat> Agenda item number 12 is Major Planned Unit Development Amendment 1909. The applicant is Donna Hartshorn. She is not in the audience, but she has applied to amend an existing planned unit development overlay district to allow for seasonal commercial, recreational, and amusement structures, to include a hovercraft track and paintball range, and to allow five lighted signs on premise to be located within 1,500 feet of a residential district or dwelling unit. For ease of description, the subject properties have been labeled A, B, and C. Uh, current conditions for lot A uh, consists of 4.38 acres zoned highway service district with a planned unit development overlay. The lot contains a 40 foot by 120 foot pole barn. Lot B consists of 15.39 acres it is zoned limited agriculture district for the planned unit development overlay district. And lot C consists of 39.87 acres. It is currently zoned general agriculture district with a planned unit development overlay. That lot contains a single family residence, a detached garage, and five accessory structures. All of these lots are located within the city of Rapid City's three mile platting jurisdiction. There is no special flood hazard area on any of the lots and access to them is provided via 66 foot wide access easement. This request was sent out for interdepartmental review. Uh, one uh, comment of concern came back from emergency services 911 and he stated that due to the number of existing address points and with this new use in mind, I would suggest it is time to name both of the access roads and give them each names and readdress all the address points. Uh, the roads he's talking about here are highlighted in green on the screen for you. And that is uh, included as a condition of approval. This is the underlying zoning districts. As you can see, highway service, limited agriculture and general agriculture. The applicant has requested to amend the existing planned unit development overlay to allow seasonal commercial and recreation and amusement structures, essentially expanding the uses that she already has on the property. Uh, the majority of the properties in the surrounding area to include the underlying zoning of tax ID 13091 are zoned highway service district, which supports the requested use. Sign permits will need to be applied for prior to placing any lighted signs on the subject properties. And lastly, to address uh, 911's concerns, like I said, we added a condition uh, that we rename those roads to the subject properties. And with that, staff recommends approval of major plan unit development amendment 1909 with conditions. Thank you. Are there questions on this item? Question. Kathy, go ahead. No, the little orange um, piece in there, the, uh, that's, um, that is residential, right? That's correct. That's and it's, suburban it's a different industry. landowner? Yes. Do you ever have any, had any complaints or any concerns from that? I did not receive any complaints or concerns. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Further questions? Okay. Um, seeing none, I'll go to the audience. We have a speaker request form on this item, uh, Kaylin and, Ter and Teresa. You'd come, come forward and then... Um, State your name for the record when you get to the mic. Uh, first off, uh, good morning to the commissioners. Thanks for letting us talk. Uh, Kaylin Dringman, my wife, Teresa Dringman. We're the neighbors, if you look at uh, 8770, yeah, that's a good one. Um, <clears throat> our major concerns, basically five. It's uh, main one is our easement coming back <laughs> in to our place. And then uh, noise, light, litter, dust. Where could you point out where your place is? Can you, go to you, the the you can use the. Oh, okay. I see. I I, I got it. Okay. Right. Thank okay. You. So our house, and then we own the adjacent acreage from here, well down to here. Um. What do you want to say? So our access is on that access point. We have a private sixty-six foot easement. 
as it stands right now. Um, with the building being so close to the easement that they put in, it's about 75 feet, maybe 80. When you have parking there as, it, as we are standing now, our easement gets not blocked totally, although it has been before. And further down where you see the turn, they're storing hay right now. So our easement really where we can use the road is 33 feet at this point. And so that concerns us if they add more things, what our access will be. We would love to know where they're planning on putting all of these items so that we can have a better feel. You know, is there going to be a sign right in front of our house? Is there going to be a lot of activity, people trespassing? Right. Those are the concerns. We wouldn't have so much of a concern if it was in block A and B, but I have a huge concern if anything goes in block C. Uh, could you? Uh, right. That's the other, yeah. Right. <clears throat> and then I'm, I might note that when they initially put in this plan development, we were notified of the initial meeting. We came to that one. And then if you recall, it was changed and delayed, changed and delayed, changed and delayed. So we never got a voice on the initial one. So I have a big concern. What's going on now? Mr. Chair. Okay. Go ahead, Mark. I think as far as lighting is concerned, I mean, just a guess, but for advertising, so it's probably going to be closer to the highway rather than back, set back. Now we're supposing, aren't we? We are. We are, we are that, supposing. Yeah. Yeah. On on the deal, it says um, five on-premise signs to be located. It might be for each item that they're having. We are speculating because we have not heard from them. Right. We were just given this notice to right. come and here. I, I wanted to make sure we were heard, our voice was heard on this one. And thank sure. you for listening. And so, I mean, I don't know if you know more of where they're planning on putting these things. Right. So, the discussions I had with the applicant are that she wanted up to five lighted signs on the premise, not that she was going to install five immediately. Uh, and they were going to be advertising up here along the highway. Uh, one of the uses that she had discussed was a hovercraft track, and she had talked about putting that up here in the uh, lot A. Okay. That's already zoned highway service. Right. Uh, now, as far as the paintball goes, I'm not exactly sure where she had planned to put that. She didn't provide a site plan for that. So, I mean, th those are our concerns. I mean, you, so you listed, I believe when you said you came up, you said you had five concerns, and I wrote down easement, noise, light, dust. What's the fifth concern? Litter. 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 We have yeah, seen the, that. The, the wind always blows from the north. And uh, so everything that's up there, you know, where it ends up. We can't do anything about the wind. No, we can't, but we can do stuff about cleaning up our litter. <laughs> because, I mean, we do see things even now with the pumpkin patch. We've seen things. Yeah, well, I don't think we need to. But so, I mean, nothing major. We, we wanted to make yeah. our concerns uh, known. And uh, if, if you were asking me yes or no in a word, I'd say no. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I go ahead. Do you need anything else from us? But I just have a question. Uh, there's no site plan yet, right? It's just they're just trying to change it so that they can maybe move forward with a plan. Is that what I'm understanding? Trying to get some some possible business venture started and wanted to make sure that she could get it approved before she went forward with any money. Invested. Do you know if they're planning to use all A, B, and C of that? Or are they only trying to keep it localized to A and B? Uh, the site plan that she provided, like I said, for the Hovercroft track would put it in the highway service district. She didn't uh, allude to any other site plans on the other two properties. Okay. Further questions? Ms. Chairman? Go ahead, Kathy. You know, you mentioned um, blocking the easement or partially blocking the easement with parking. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So now I look at condition eight and it addresses parking. Um, I'm sorry, I cannot see that, so please. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, and so my question really is for the staff is that, so this is said, this is enough minimum of 67 parking spaces now we, is that is that the calculation so when you have a maximum of 300 people at any one time do they assume that there's a certain number of people in each car and therefore you calculate 67 or how is that number 67 arrived at that's how they determine that yes by the square footage of the 9 by 18 uh, parking space that was calculated to be enough for uh, the 300 people that they were limited to. Say that again. I can't quite hear it. What? Yes. The, the requirements for the parking spaces are 9 feet by 18 feet. And the way that staff calculated that, uh, that they would require 91 parking spaces to accommodate for all those people visiting that area. 
Oh, I see. So there's 91 plus 67. In other words, how many parking 91 spaces? at the arena and 67 at the farmer market uh, up here in this okay. area. Okay. So, so where's the arena? I believe their arena is down here. Okay. You know what that, that's right by our house. Yeah. No. Oh, I no. think they already did that whenever we weren't. Yeah, home. and that, that's the one that uh, snuck by us. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. But what you're saying, at least for the the farmer's market one, which is the one in that on lot by the closest of the highway, you're saying this 67 parking spaces isn't enough because they have to end up parking on the easement or what? Well, they do not have designated parking spaces. Like they don't have a parking lot per se. They do have gravel and on the, I hate to say it, I'm not good with directions. So you see where the access road arrow is uh -huh. below that building. That's where the parking is, just butting up to it. Yes. Which is within the 66 feet. And then people sometimes park on the road. P people too. park where they feel they can park. Because it's so, not like a parking lot that says okay. this is the So really, lot. to solve that problem would maybe, I mean, I mean, I'm not suggesting they really create a parking with parking strips, you know, but some signage or something. I mean, would that, I mean, because really, it's not a good idea to block your easement. I mean, right. that's an emergency issue as well as just convenience. So, I mean, I just, I guess I would think that it's not asking too much to require some signage to try to assist people in parking correctly. Right. I, I thought that um, on some occasions people spray chalk on the rock to designate the parking spots. I, mean, I, I don't know. How long it lasts? I mean, maybe it goes away with the rain, but some people just put two posts in the ground and run a string between them. <laughs> I've seen that too. Oh, <laughs> no, I, I guess I'd suggest that maybe eight, number eight, condition eight. There's something added to that to just say that the, you know, that the parking needs to be clearly designated. designated. I agree. I am. I concur. I mean, ultimately, we just don't want it on our easement so that we can actually get in and out. Well, that's our, enough, yeah. our major concern. Right, I understand, yes. Uh -huh. I mean, what would you folks recommend for us to do? Well, I'm, than, I'm not going to say, other they, than say what, no. what idea they come up to keep it open with, but just to keep it open. I'll yeah. let them figure out how they want to do it. Or a contra you know, maybe you have two things. One, designate the parking spots, but then also have a sign saying, you know, no parking along along the road or something. Right. I mean, exactly. I just think there's ways of handling this and um, to just assist the people to know where to park and where not to park. And Definitely, that would be very helpful. And I'm sure that, you know, perhaps you, the, your staff here has better ideas than we can come up with as we sit here, but uh, I, I just think that's a reasonable addition to have to, to eight. I would add to that as a condition, clearly designated parking spaces, clearly marked and designated parking spaces. And perhaps add, if I, if I may just say and add to that, that designate that, specify that there's no parking on the road easement or something um, to make that clear. Okay. And, um, Mr. Chairman, Go ahead, I, I just have one other comment. This conditional use permit, if approved, would be reviewed in one year or upon complaint. So if in 10 days time, two months, whatever, you can come forth with a complaint and we will review it again. So that gives you some you know, method of getting it before us right. you know, in the future. You don't have to wait the year, you can. I appreciate you pointing that out. We want to be good neighbors. You know, oh, our, sure. our families are going to be next to each other for hundreds of years. Maybe. I understand. God willing. <laughs> but, but we just want to know what's going on and make it the best where we can all get along. Yeah, I hear you. And, and that makes sense. And I, I hear the words you're saying. Right. Uh, Jason, is there anything in here uh, about dust? They have to provide things in a dust-free manner or something? Oh, there yes, is. So the, uh, the so last the parking lot. Of, the last sentence in condition number eight. Okay. So um, we don't specify, though, what they have to do to maintain the, the dust-free air, right? Okay. Well, once again, uh, one of your concerns, one of the things that's stipulated, if it becomes an issue, uh, you, you need to let us know so we can address it with the landowners. Thank you. 
Any Ms. further questions? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, just one other comment. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure, I don't know if you people have all of this information, so I would ask you to get them copies of everything that we are reviewing today so that they can have a better understanding of all of the restrictions sure. being put upon the owners. You know, that, that yeah. would help, I would think, yeah. Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, Kathy. So uh, looking at number nine, condition number nine, that the internal driveway continue to be 18 feet wide, is that that your easement? Is that the one in the same, I mean, is that what that refers to? That internal driveway? Yes, the current road that they utilize is, is only 18 feet. Right, okay, so that's the road that sometimes gets obstructed, so that's less than 18 feet. Yeah, so, um, you know, like I said, our, our easement is 66 feet. Yes, uh-huh. Right. Right. I have, here's a copy of the, I'm sure you have yep, one. Yeah, I do, yeah. Uh -huh. And there is a but condition on there also that says prior to operation, the applicant must submit a parking plan to the planning director to review. So you, you guys are going to see the parking plan. Yes, that was reviewed uh, when this was first approved back in 2017, oh. I believe. Okay. Further questions? Thank you very much for coming up. Next speaker request form uh, is Peter Schmidt on this item. Hello, uh, Peter Schmid. I've never done this before. Uh, I received the letter um, that they were required to send out, and my property isn't um, touching theirs, but it's it's close by, close enough to get the letter, I guess. Um, I came to to learn what they had planned. Uh, I am disappointed they're not here to explain what they have planned. I, it sounds like if if they know enough about uh, hover carts and and you know, like they have to know they have to know something i just can't believe it's um kind of up in the air um i've lived in rapid city long enough to watch all the other tourist attractions on highway 16 between our point and town um when they're new they're they're nice if they aren't run correctly it it really uh, goes downhill quick um if my property was as close to say the ranch amusement park when it opened um you know i wouldn't i i wouldn't have liked that and it, it took a long time to get that torn down uh, the maze got torn down um you know marine life i mean there's there's a huge list of them um so i, I guess I, I just submitted the speaker form to say i kind of like it the way it is <laughs> uh, there's a trailer park there now that's you know, questionable, and, and the campground's not very nice, but it's, I, I just feel like if, if, if their plans come to fruition, which I just have to believe that they're out there, um, it, it would take the area a step backwards, I think, down the road. Um, but I'll, again, I'll just pay attention, I guess, and just wanted to let you know that I'm not an anti-change person, <laughs> but this it just seems like the start of not the best use for that beautiful piece of property mr chairman go ahead Sam. and I, I just want to say the same comment to you that i said to the first gentleman if it is disturbing you in any way you can complain at any time and it will come back before us you know for additional review and, and that's that's always an uh, it it's tough once a, sure. a train starts going or a ship starts moving, it's tough to slow it down or change its direction. I understand. Um, so I, if they're, you know, pie in the sky ideas and they're just trying to decide if they should do it, I just want to know that's probably, I mean, it's their business. They can do what they want, but it, it, um, <coughs> it seems like, uh, it seems like not a good idea. Um, that, that's all I really have. I again, I came here to learn more. There's not too much to learn about. Um, it's, it's disappointing. I mean, a lot of people took a lot of time to come here to learn about it, and um, they they should have shown up. Thank, thank you. Are there any questions for Peter? Go ahead. No questions for him. I just want to make a comment. Go ahead. A lot of things are resolved by neighbors communicating with neighbors. So. 
um, I encourage anybody that's apprehensive about this to go talk to these people and let them know what your concerns are and maybe they'll say geez we didn't know anybody was even concerned and uh, they might accommodate you in a manner um, that you weren't expecting so any further comments questions seeing none uh, any uh, comments or questions from the audience regarding this issue Seen none. Um, staff recommendation is for approval of the major planned unit development amendment 19-09 with 26 conditions. And there was discussion of the adder uh, for item number eight to have clearly marked and designated parking spots. Um, and was there something else that to, to not park within the roadway? Just so yep. and, and, and establish where the no parking is okay. right, along the easement. Go ahead, Sandy. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I, as I listen to these people talk, it would occur to me that the owners should have a proposed layout showing where these different things are going to take place, um, you know, artist rendering or some such thing. And absent that, I'm to the point that I would almost recommend we postpone approving this until we can see their artist rendering or what, whatever to show exactly where the various items would be placed. Right, staff did receive a, a hand sketched plan of where they're going to put the hovercraft track and that would be up here in lot A. Now, okay, as is far that as the in this information? Goes, uh, I don't know if that made it in there or not, I'll be honest with you. Well, I, I just no, I don't think so. wanted to lend that comment. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. So this is just an amendment to the PUD. If they're going to do anything after that, they have to get building permits, if they're going to build structures, if they're going to put in right. that hovercraft yep. track. And that, was, and that was discussed with the applicant, with the sign permits and the temporary building permits, because the hovercraft track that she proposed was going to be a seasonal use. So they would come in on shipping containers. They would have the shipping container staged there for the season. They would take them out. They would set up a track. They don't have to have an improved surface to run on the track. She had planned to put uh, hay bales around to create the track and run them that way. And then at the end of the season, pack them away. And I guess maybe what, maybe I should ask this. If we approve it currently, is there, if they decide to move forward with any of their plans of that, uh, the amusement park that it sounds like they're trying to put in there, they have to come back to get other permits, correct? Correct. Yeah, the other way that the uh, planned unit development is written now, it's very specific in, in the uses that she can have out there. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Kathy. You know, I'd like to ask one other question that has not been uh, brought up yet, and that is, um, you know, I use that Highway 16 there a lot, and so one of the problems with the farmer's market is that all the cars that kind of come to a screeching <laughs> slowdown yes. when they decide, oh, a farmer's market, and they turn in. And it come, and it happens coming, both cars coming from town, headed south, and coming in. But now when I've been kind of just on the street, I've heard that Department of Transportation, State Transportation, is really taking a look at that entire stretch through there Correct. and trying to make some improvements, not just for the, the problems that you know sometimes crop up with the farmers market, but you know the reptile gardens, Yoke Neck Road, the whole the whole bit. Could, do you have any information on that? that this was routed to the South Dakota Department of Transportation, and they provided no comment on that. But I mean, oh, just just outside of that, do you have any information on what they might be thinking of or planning? Or I can't speak to anything that they have planned in that area. I don't okay. know, Kathy. I believe I heard the same thing that DOT was taking a look at redoing that whole area, putting in additional turn lanes. Um, so I don't know where the turn lanes are going to be or how they're going to set them up, but that's that was what I was okay. made aware of as well. Okay, good. So it has been identified as a concern, it sounds like, yeah. Yes, I wanted to confirm with that. I actually received an email just this past weekend on a request for some information on some infrastructure in the area so they can look at it. So they are looking at that corridor right now. Right. Okay, good. Thank you. Jim? Okay. 
Uh, looks like we have, uh, please come forward again and state your name for the record, if you'd like to speak on the item. I am Teresa Dringman. Um, I went to the meetings that the transportation has been having on the road. And what they are visiting is eliminating the access, the three access points or two additional side roads, one coming into where um, the pumpkin patch is possibly the one at Happy Holidays and the one where the Hartshorns go in. So three actual access points. If they have it open, it would be a right turn only is what they're looking at. You will not be able to turn left onto Highway 16 as, and they haven't set, finalized anything. This is just what they're leaning towards. You would have to go right and then make a U-turn to go south on 16. I see. And they will have one turning lane going on to Spring Creek. Neck Yoke, Neck Yoke Road. And so that is what, at least the last meeting they had, they will be having a meeting in June to kind of find, give more definitive findings of what they're figuring they're going to do. All right, good. Question. Go ahead. But they're still planning on uh, you, those, uh, I guess I'd call them minor turn lanes, but as far as the Neck Yoke, you'd still be able to go across and turn left, or are they no. eliminating that as well? They are wanting to eliminate that. They would have it a right turn lane where you'll have to shift over to the left so that you could make a U-turn to go south. That is what their most likely avenue of, of doing this road at this point. Well, they they do have, if, if you're interested, they do have a website. I think it's US 16 corridor. Don't quote me on that, but they do have a website showing their plans. Uh -huh. Ultimately, they don't want those three small um, roads that we have where it parallels, like I said, Happy Holidays, the Pumpkin Patch, and the Heart Shorns. They're trying to eliminate those altogether. We voiced concerns being that there is a bus stop there. It's a pretty dangerous area. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, sorry, okay. I just wanted to, yeah. since you guys didn't thank know. Thank you for the clarification. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Further questions on this item? Did you have something, Mark? Nope. Further questions from the audience on this item? Seeing none, uh, again, recommendation was for approval with the uh, 26 conditions with the additions to uh, item number eight. I would entertain a motion. Move for approval with the additional requirements of the parking issues. Motion, is there a second? I second. I'll second. Oh. Motion and second, further discussion. <clears throat> I just want to point out that I did look up that website real quick. It's us16corridor.com, just for information. Okay. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no? No. Uh, so we have five to only one no. Uh, motion carries. Uh, brings us to item 13. Cody Sack, Environmental Planner. The following items have been placed on the construction permit agenda to be heard for public comment and will not be voted on by the Planning Commission. Any Planning Commissioner, staff member, or audience member may make a comment on any of the items. Comments received will be considered by the Planning Director who will make the final decision on the construction permit. Is there any questions on number 13? Any questions for uh, staff on item 13? There are no members uh, in the audience now on item 13 either. Mm -hmm. So we will move on to item, four, item 14. Good morning, item 14 is a county board report. The Board of Commissioners concurred with the Planning Commission's recommendations from the January 13, 2020 Planning Commission meeting. Okay, uh, any questions on that? Items, item 15, items from the public, seeing none, moving on to item 16, items from staff. Um, items from staff, uh, the comprehensive plan view to 2040 Board of Commissioners meeting, they did schedule that hearing for March 3rd, 2020. Say that again. March 3rd, 2020. And we'll get a copy of that. Um, well before that, that we yes. can see the red lines? Yes, um, I am working with um, Mr. Rust right now. I sent him over the comments that the Board of Commissioners had made at their meeting on December 18th, so I'm waiting for that copy, and once I get it, I will get it to you guys as soon as I get okay. it. Okay, 
Thank you. Next item is uh, item 16, items from, or excuse me, uh, set items from the membership, item 17. Seeing none, item 18, adjournment. I would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. We're adjourned. Thank you.